sunlight, staring into the moonlight, been thinking all night of you. Could I be caught up in a dream or another fantasy of a time when it would be me and you? crazy but it seems that these feelings have control now they got a hold of me sometimes i want to go but your heart won't let me leave a hand i want to fold but i hold it close to me i guess i'm gonna go it's gonna be it's gonna be my heart you went and stole and your gaze it brings me peace my heart you went and stole and your gaze it brings me peace forever on a stroll a lonely road it's gotta be for me and you As the memories they unfold I stare to the abyss A place that I can't go Girl I'm always gonna miss The love that I can't show Just wish that I could be there Right by your side Girl I'd love you for forever And cherish you with pride And do it for me and you So what's up YouTube, back again, another episode in the studio with KC. So, as always, before we get started, like, subscribe, hit the bell icon, do what you can do to help out the channel. So, we just had a show yesterday, let's see, what's today, Monday, so, would have been Saturday, Saturday. So, pretty good show down in Indianapolis. New venue, one that I haven't been to. Pretty good little venue, I'd have to say. As far as the venue goes, it was definitely, definitely interesting. So not only was they throwing shows, but there was also an art gallery, which I found to be really, really cool. It was kind of cool to be able to uh, go between the shows and uh, between the acts and walk around, check out all the art that they had hanging around. So a couple different kinds of art that they're promoting there at the same time. You got the music and then, of course, you got, you know, actual art, painting, sculptures and such. It was definitely a cool time. Uh, shout out Case Kane, put all that stuff together. So, but that got me thinking about what do you need to do at showtime? 
So when I first started out doing this stuff, going to shows, I never really had anybody to really, you know, tell me what I needed to be doing at the shows. And a lot of people would think, okay, so I got a show, let me get my let me get my slot together, let me get my songs, I'm just gonna go, I'm gonna hop on stage when it's my turn, I'm gonna do my thing, and then that's it. But to me, I feel like there is a lot more to shows than just jumping up on stage and holding the crowd for your allotted time. So I put together a few things to talk about. So, let's see what we got here. Alright, so, what to do at showtime. Now, when you go to a show, a lot of times, a lot of people ain't going to think about, you know, the venue. The venue, they're the ones that actually put up all the overhead to have a place for you to be able to do shows. So, you know, and a lot of times... They they are the ones that, you know, they got they got the money out, not only for all the overhead for the building itself, but, you know, all the alcohol in anything that's there, food that's there, um, employees to actually run the venue, and then on top of that, maybe even security. So, my number one tip that I would say... If you're going to a show, especially as an up-and-coming artist, if you haven't, you know, made it, got millions of subscribers, views, whatever, and, you know, actually as the headlining artist, my number one tip would be to support the venue. So anytime that you go to do a show, I would recommend always bring a few dollars in your pocket. If there's a bar, maybe buy a couple drinks. If they serve food, you know, buy some food. And if you, you know, have a few people with you, I know that, you know, a lot of times artists try to get that, hey, they're with me kind of attitude to, you know, expect, okay, I'm performing, I'm on stage, so anybody that is with me should be coming in to this venue for free. I, for one, I don't think so. If you bring multiple people with you to the show to support you, have them buy tickets, have them pay their way in. That's another way of supporting the venue. So if you can... If you can, you know, get a drink or order some food or even have the people that's with you, you know, buy their way in, that that supports the venue. And in supporting the venue, that guarantees you a spot to be able to come back and actually perform again. So on top of that, support the other acts. If you are at a show and... You know, I I always say that whether there's five people or whether there's 500, they get the same show. But you know that if you're up on that stage, you're going to want people to be out there turning up to your music, paying attention to your set. So if you are waiting for your turn or you've already went up, Be by the stage. Be stage side and support the other acts. That right there will go a long way because when those other acts, they see you out there turning up to their set, hyping up the crowd, you know, they are going to in turn be more likely to give you the same love and support in return. So always, always, always support the venue and support the other acts. The third thing on my list is to network with the other artists and promoters. If you're an upcoming artist and you are not the headline of the show, you should be out there. And I would even argue that even if you are the headliner, 
as a headliner, I would say even then, probably more importantly than network with the other artists. Go meet the other artists, network with them. That right there is going to be one good way that, you know, in the last video we talked about the importance of networking. And any time that you go to shows, you should always be networking with the other artists, with the promoters that put the show on, and even with the venue owner. If you can talk to the person that owns the bar, definitely give it a shot give them a holler some of the people that have supported me the most have actually been the venue owners so and honestly shout out to carl's tavern and davis for that one because that dude right there supports artists in ways that i can't even begin to explain so always you know, support the venue, support the other acts, networks with other artists and promoters. Now, the next tip that I have would be to record your set. If you got something that you can look back on, if you got something that you can look back on to see how you moved on stage, how the audience reacted to your show you know just even just little things you know what I'm saying like what happened when I did this move or I did that move or you know when I sang this part of the song how did the artists other artists react to my set how did the people in the crowd react to my set like I would always say if you can have somebody out in the audience to record your set, I would definitely do that because that's going to give you something that you can look back on to reference and then in doing that, you're going to be able to, you know, see what happened, what you did and be able to get better at your craft over time. So, you know, I'm, I'm one from experience. I will tell you, it is easy to sit in a studio and make music. It's easy to get on that mic and to do your thing. But when you have a couple hundred people, all their eyes on you, that's when shit kind of gets real. Like, to be honest... When I first started doing what I'm doing, I had crazy stage fright. I mean, crazy, crazy stage fright to the point to where I just stood in one spot. I spit three songs, didn't move a muscle. I was scared as shit. But in forcing myself to keep go out there, keep doing it. Every time I went out there, it got easier and easier. And then one day, that stage fright turned into kind of a rush. So, I would always recommend, if you can, if you got somebody with you, always record your set. And take pictures too, because having pictures on stage, that's always going to look good on your social media. The last thing that I have on here, which I could probably come up with a thousand more pieces of information to put on this, but the last thing that I have on here is relax and feel the music. A lot of people will get up on stage and if the audience can see that you are tense, they are going to feel that. And they are going to be less reactive to you. So if you can just get up there, relax, feel the music, get into it, get hype. The more hype you are, the more hype the audience is going to be. So relax, feel the music. So those are the things that... I have just a few little tidbits 
I figured since we just did a show, I would come on here and talk about, you know, just a few things to do at Showtime. Because as an up-and-coming artist that... Yeah, that's a good one. So don't forget to have someone in the audience that completely supports you. So yeah, definitely. If you can definitely get somebody out there that, you know, supports you. The more hype they are, the more hype the people are going to be around them. And that's why I said, you know, to support all the other artists. Because if there's somebody that supports you and they're standing in the middle of the floor and... You say, how are you guys doing? And they start hooping and hollering. The people around them are probably going to be more likely to make noise. Everybody knows that when you're watching a funny movie, it's always funnier when you're sitting there and you're watching it with somebody that's laughing just as much as you are. So definitely Hype your section of the crowd. Have somebody there that supports you that can hype the crowd during your set. So, since it was showtime, you know, I would say it was a pretty good show, all in all, the other day. Now, I've had bigger, I've had better, but I try, like I say, to whether it's five people or it's 500 people. I give the same show, the same energy. I never, never short change my set just because there's not a lot, not enough people there, in my opinion. So I've had shows where beginning of the year, January show, you know, it's cold outside. And have 15 people in the audience. And then go to that exact same venue in the middle of summer. And there be bodies all the way to the door. So, you know, there's really not much difference between 2 and 200. You know, you get the right, the right show, promoted right. Really, no matter what time of year, you can pop off with a packed out show. Now you're going to be more more likely to have packed out shows in the summertime, you know, rather than wintertime shows. So when you are networking and you guys are picking up shows, try to remember, you know, those few things. Do I really want to travel a long distance because, you know, say if it's January, do I want to travel that distance to perform at a show? Because I've definitely been at shows where it's really just been me performing for the other audience. Like the other artist on the show. Like I have definitely had shows like that. Now as an artist, you know, I would put that on the promoter and say you know the promoter didn't promote the show so nobody showed up but in the same sense as an artist it is up to you to promote your show so you know you should always be you know a month before the show have a flyer posted you know start you know do a couple videos hey i'm going to be here on this time and then as you start getting closer to the show you know 3 weeks out have an event page invite as many people as you can invite to that event page and then start start dropping clips and teasers and you know what I mean take your show flyer make a little video of it put one of your songs to it and drop that you know what I'm saying don't just drop the flyer make it interesting make it interactive you know you can take a picture and a little video editing software and do crazy things these days so 
you know, always promote yourself, promote the people around you that you're performing with. If you and five buddies are on the same show, you should be sharing their posts, they should be sharing your post. So always support the ones around you. The more that you support the other artists, the more the other artist will support you. So I just wanted to come on here and, you know, drop some tips and advice for you guys. You know, I figured keeping to this little how-to format that we've been doing on the channel, you know, having a show, I haven't really talked too much about what to do at showtime. So those are just a few little tips. So... If you guys got anything else that I didn't say, like I said, I could have dropped a thousand tips on there. But just to keep it short and sweet, you know, I just put a handful of them on there. So if you guys got any more tips, you know, drop them down in the comment section. And then, like always... Like the video, subscribe, hit the bell icon so you guys can stay up to date with what we got going on. KC of SOSMG. There is going to be a couple songs that are going to be dropping that I've recorded for some other people that's going to be dropping on the page here soon. And then so far, I believe it is going to be September 29th in Fort Wayne at Carl's Tavern will probably be the next chance that you guys are going to have to see me live. So... Like I said, like, subscribe, hit the bell, and this is your boy, and we...